Welcome back to another episode of Talk Dead to Me, the only Walking Dead podcast with the balls. Yeah, I said it. To start at Season 10, I am your host, Johnny O'Dell. I'm the social media manager for The Walking Dead. And with me, as always, Alexandra August, our podcast producer. Alexandra, how's it going? It's going pretty well, Johnny. How are you? I am doing well. And if you guys missed last week's episode, uh, then you will not know that our dear, dear friend, Woody Tondorf, is not dead, but on paternity leave. He has a baby. <gasps> That he That's made right. with his wife. Well, his wife made it. He was there at one point, and now he's there again, back at it, taking care of a child. He'll he'll correct me if I'm wrong. I think like the first like year or two, the whole goal is just let's keep this alive. I, yeah, I mean that would be my 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 goal with with kids forever, basically until they're 18. If you make it to 18, then I've done my job. This week's episode, we are going to be covering season five, episode eight, Coda. Uh, you know, we just keep doing all these classic episodes, and this is definitely another one of them. Uh, if you're not familiar with the name alone, it is the one where Beth gets shot in the dome. That rhymed accidentally. Alexandra, w- what can the good people out there look forward to this episode? Good people can look forward to so much. A veritable buffet of good audio content. We're going to start off with winners and losers. Then we're going to move right on into Apocatips, my personally my favorite segment of Talk Dead to Me Reanimated. We've got our special guest, Christine Woods, a.k.a. Officer Ooh. John Lerner. Yep, yep. Uh, very excited to very excited to listen to that interview, Johnny. And uh, then we're going we're gonna to wrap it all up with uh, perhaps a Yelp review and some stray arrows. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah. It's it's important to read Yelp reviews of hospitals before you go. It's true. Um, and yes, I had a ton of fun talking to Christine Woods. We'll get into that later. But first, it's winners and losers. Alexander, why don't you start us off with your winners? Uh, my winner this week, uh, kind of which might be a surprise to some, my winner this week is Beth. Uh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The, the, the one, one of the many who died this this episode. I can't wait to hear this. I mean, okay, listen. Well, all right. Beth did die. Beth was horribly murdered at the hands of an asshole cop. That is fair. And Beth didn't deserve to die. It was uh, really, really, her life was cut way too short. She was about to embark on a star-crossed rom- romance with Daryl. He was so excited to see her. It was wonderful. It was very excited. Very exciting. But then, unfortunately, Don caps her because... Well, to be fair, Beth did stab her with um, some scissors, so I'm not going to say that Dawn yeah. was completely unmotivated, completely unjustified. But Beth, Beth spends a lot of season five finding her way to basically being an actualized person who is not terrified of the apocalypse, who is not com- secondary to her sister, who's not constantly trying to find a boyfriend. She did what the survivors essentially do this season and a little bit of last season, which is find a way to live that is a moral find their new moral code the best person that they can be in the midst of a completely changed world and beth does that this week she decides that no it might be easier for her to stay alive and do what don says and let noah and let noah go back to the hospital because he wants to but she doesn't she fights for him and beth is not a warrior so it doesn't go very well but Beth, she, Beth was the best beth she'd ever been this episode and so i was very pleased wow. to see her her arc I was very pleased to see her arc move to this place. I was sad how it ended, but it was nice to see that her grow this way. Well, uh, if if Beth is your winner, I can't wait to hear your loser. <laughs> well, my loser is Maggie. Of course, Maggie. the alive one. <laughs> Maggie was on an emotional roller coaster this episode. She gets back mm. from she gets back from learning that there's no hope in DC. Eugene is definitely um, a charming individual, but 100% not full of a cure. And so that's a bummer. But then, then she gets, they re- everybody reunites and Michonne's like, guess what? Guess who's alive? Guess who's alive? So <laughs> devastating when you know what's going to happen because you're just oh so happy God. for Maggie. You're like, oh my God, she like, they probably both assumed the other one was dead. Like, this is so and great. Lori Cohen is such a good actress and you could see the oh. joy on her face when she sees, when she hears that Maggie's alive and it's genuine. And I was just sitting there watching it today, just being like. God, I think that's when I texted you. Fuck me up, season eight, like five oh eight, five oh eight. She like, and then see, and then you know, seeing her. It's interesting because it's like the fact that this took place at a hospital made it seem like it was this just like extra souped up episode of Grey's Anatomy, where <laughs> like there you're tr- like we're it's Beth. Beth's got to be saved. It's 
Beth's life is on the line. She goes in for a major surgery and Rick's like, Rick tells Maggie, it's going to be okay. We're going to get her. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to get Beth out of this surgery. Right. Um, I'm actually going to start with my loser first, uh, which is cops. Uh, Mm. Cops really, uh, you know, obviously there, we're going to get into it. There are a lot of cultural parallels you can draw from watching this episode if you guys uh haven't watched it recently obviously you know we have cops basically running this um hospital in sort of an authoritarian way and there's a lot of things that you see in this episode that are reminiscent of things happening on the news in the streets things that you see all the time uh when that one Right, when that one cop, like, shoves the elderly man to the ground, like, the exact same way we saw in Buffalo. Like, it's horrifying. And just the way that, like, they manipulate the system. And, you know, you almost start liking Dawn uh, before the whole Beth scene uh, because, you know, she's, like, has a gun to her comrade and is like, you changed. You're not, like, the the guy I was in the rookie class with. Like, you laugh when a girl gets raped. You you know, you do you push down elderly people, yeah. you do all these horrible things, and he's like, You're no better, which is like, Okay, yes, I am an asshole, but you're also terrible. And you're like, Well, like watching the episode, especially this week, has been really just sort of eye opening and just, you know, reminds you that this has just been always going on. Yeah. It was interest it was so interesting that we, we honestly got like audio listeners, we did not pick this episode like on purpose because it was timely it's kind of it wound up we made this list a long time ago for what episodes right. that we would do and this was just a very effective one and it just so happens the timing of it was pretty impeccable but yeah just the idea of cops kind of what to do in an apocalypse like the the fact that this this show was like oh yeah let's let's the, the walking dead thought to be like oh yeah actually interesting question what would happen to cops after an apocalypse and basically what this episode is is kind of yeah like kind of an investigation of how much power is too much power i I, well i I kind of feel like that's a question that you know that america is asking now like how much power is too much power for cops and how much authority is too much authority for cops and like is is it time for us to walk that back and restructure it is it a time for us to you know way more independent internal investigation into that it's it's very very interesting parallels um right and i hate to admit it but it was a little cathartic um you know i'm not advocating violence against anyone but um when it comes to bad cops especially harassing cops killer cops um seeing uh, o'donnell get pushed down that elevator shaft was <laughs> very rewarding for I me and watching- then also that one sorry that one cop who Rick, it was such an interesting parallel. You're talking about what happens to cops after the apocalypse. Rick obviously does his own thing. Some people just stay cops. And seeing Rick just fucking gun it and hit this guy with his car, that- like that was insane. So like, and then obviously Dawn being the cherry on top at the end. I mean, the bad cops mostly got theirs this episode. Yeah, this uh, Coda had a lot to say about bad cops, and it was that bad cops suck. We haven't mentioned this written by Angela Kane, who's obviously now the showrunner um, since season nine and ten. And she, you know, she's been with the show since I think season two or three. So um, excellent, excellent writing by Angela. My favorite thing about um, O'Donnell getting shoved down the elevator shaft, aside from just O'Donnell getting pushed down the elevator shaft after having laughed at a woman getting raped. uh, That was uh, that on its own was great. But I was watching it with subtitles because there was something I'd missed in a conversation a couple of minutes before. And it it really like. The, the the sound the subtitles for when O'Donnell actually falls for the sound effects for when O'Donnell falls down the actual shaft are um, scream thud and then there's a second and then a new line comes up and just goes splatters so splatters. According to oh his, yeah yeah he like he hit a couple of walls and then just exploded in a pile of guts which I thought was hysterical now we're gonna get on to our newish segment called Yelp reviews. Yelp uh, reviews. I feel like there's only so much you can say about Grady, so I'm just going to take it away this week. Um, last week we did one for Terminus, and this week it is going to be for Grady Memorial Hospital. And without further ado, here it goes. All right, the title is because always you always have to make a title. Worst checkup ever. All caps. A few weeks ago, I went in to get my annual checkup. I mean, what better time than in a zombie apocalypse, right? 
Firstly, there is a lot of security here. I figure, hey, times are tough. Maybe this is the new normal. But then I noticed the decor, which was abysmal. There was blood on the floors, bodies in the elevator shaft, and I'm pretty sure someone got hit by a car and abandoned outside. Although I did get a green lollipop at the end of it, it turns out I have syphilis. Or do I? I don't know. This hospital sucks. Grady Memorial, more like Shady Memorial. Zero out of five stars. Golf clap. That has been a solo edition of Yelp Reviews. You can now find all my Yelp Reviews on Spotify if you subscribe (laughs) to this podcast. All right. Um, Now we're going to get on to uh, one of our favorite segments, which has its own copyright-free theme music, we think, called Apocatips. Alexandra, why don't you give us your pocket tip for Coda? My pocket tip for Coda uh, was brought to you by Sasha, a.k.a. Sneaker Mm. Martin Green, uh, and it's silencers. All oh yeah, more like a sneak in Martin Green. Uh, yeah, what? Rick is negotiating his entrance to Grady Memorial. He's got Sasha up there, who's just waiting, waiting to fire her gun at someone or something. And God bless that lone walker for coming up behind the cops, just as the cops ask, "Where are your people?" As if on cue, a walker pops up. Sasha pops that walker with a silencer, and Rick's like, "They're close." Just so, just so you know, if you a if a if you want a gun in the apocalypse, obviously use a silencer because then it's not going to attract other things for you to shoot and waste bullets on. And B, it just looks really fucking cool if you can time it right. That is fantastic. I have uh, two quick ones for apocalypse. My first one is we kind of covered it earlier. Don't pick a fight near an open elevator shaft because mm-hmm. one of you will probably get thrown down it. Asking for an accident. Asking for an accident. I mean, you were just waiting. You get close enough, and then you push X on that quick time event, and you find yourself <laughs> in an elevator shaft, and it is not pretty, especially if there are, you know, undead zombos at the bottom of it. Oh, um, undead zombos. Okay. I'm sorry. Have we heard? Is Has zombos been, been a no, word because for walkers? The word zombie does not exist That's in the Walking Dead universe. Zombo um, is not zombie. I know. Zombos is my favorite. <laughs> I like saying it. Happen. Yeah. Um, my second apocalypse tip is karma's real. And there's no better example of this than Father Gabriel, who famously, uh, anecdotally, uh, basically abandoned his entire congregation, left them to die outside of his church as he, you know, you like know, basically opposite. barricaded himself in his sanctuary and let all of the people that relied on him die. And this scene almost played out for him in this episode. I mean, it did play out, but he didn't die. He was thankfully saved by Carl Michonne, but it almost happened. And it is a good reminder that karma can exist and probably does. And you should watch out with how shitty you are to people, especially if you're leaving them to die outside of a church. Especially if your entire job was to take care of people and gui- and guide them, be a shepherd and guide your right. lambs, guide your lambs. And yeah. Gabriel just straight up was like, nah. And that wraps up Apocalypse. Remember, folks, in a real apocalypse, which we are nearing closer every day, you need to write all of these Apocalypse down and use them, practice them in real life, and they will help you. So no elevator shafts, use silencers, and karma's a thing. So there you go. If you take nothing else from this podcast, take that. All right. Now we're going to get on to our guest. She played Dawn Lerner in The Walking Dead, and uh, her name is Christine Wood. She is a very lovely person. Uh, she had so many fun insights, and uh, we also got to talk about some serious topics uh, revolving current events and uh, police culture and how her mind has changed about cops uh, since uh, in the last few weeks. So huh. without further ado, Pass Johnny, take it away. Our guest this week is the exceptionally talented actress who played Officer Dawn Lerner in The Walking Dead. You also know her from a million other projects like Perfect Couples, Hello Ladies, About a Boy, and Grace and Frankie, just to name a few. Uh, Christine Woods, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing okay, and I'm happy yeah. to be here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I was looking up your IMDb before this interview and it is stacked. I mean, you must have like the greatest agent of all time. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I, um, I do have a really great agent, by the way. Yeah. Um, but I am 
definitely one of those actors that does a lot of stuff kind of under the radar because I bounce drama, comedy, like I kind of um, all over the place. Yeah. So I think that a lot of times um, I can go a little undetected, mm -hmm. but I think that's a good thing. Yeah. You I know? think so too. Yeah. I had a lot of people not know, not recognize me from The Walking Dead. When I did Your it, hair was pulled it. back the whole time. Yeah, yeah. And I looked very different. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's always kind of a new discovery when people are mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, you were on The Walking Dead. Yeah. Then what What were you? Who, <laughs> Who did you play? And then, You're of course, I would now. say, like, why well, I killed Beth? And they're like, <gasps> that's <laughs> right. What a thing to be known for. People are still talking about that. that um, but how? How have you personally been doing in quarantine so far? We've been, we're in like day 400, I think. I have no idea. You know, it's been a, a roller coaster, obviously, yeah. for, as it has likely been for everybody. Um, you know, I think it's like, obviously my business fully shut down, mm -hmm. as did yeah. many businesses, many, you know, fields. Right. Um, but I... It's interesting because uh, California just opened, and I think parts in, of Georgia have opened now yes. to like start production. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely like, I didn't, I just didn't think it would happen this year. Yeah. So I'm a little bit like, what? Like, I think that happens tomorrow. And I'm a little yeah. disoriented. <laughs> and but, you're- Yeah, so it's definitely been good days, bad days. Again, I think a lot of time to read and think about um just like some activism work and being more present and just kind of gathering strength i suppose yeah yeah that's important right now um mm -hmm. we're gonna get into that in a little bit with um obviously your character being a cop from walking dead so uh but you are you grew up in orange county is that mm -hmm. right yeah i, I think grew up yeah. south orange county yeah wow okay i heard they were they're now saying that you don't have to wear a mask there anymore. I just got that news alert and I'm like, oh no. I, I am I am actually like overly cautious about this whole thing. Like even yes. if they're opening everything up, I'm like, I, you know, I'm just gonna stay home. Yes, I mean, it, it's, it terrifies me. And I was not like a germaphobe or somebody who was like very aware of things like that before. Right. But some of my germaphobe friends are like, well, welcome to my everyday life forever. Oh. This is always oh. how it feels like to me that everybody's just wow. being careless and like everything is contaminated. Yeah. And I feel like we're kind of on that wavelength now, but I definitely feel, look, I think it's definitely a privilege for people that they don't have to go out and do what they need to do to get what they need to get. Yeah. And I think that it's, like, I feel really grateful that I don't have to go out and that I'm not on the front lines. I'm not a medical worker. I'm not, you know, somebody that like has to pay their bills by delivering food or shop, you know, those, those right. things that like, right. God, you just take for granted and you just don't realize how reliant you are on so many people. And, but I'm still terrified oh. to like go out to eat. Yes, absolutely. Um, we, I went to one of the protests the other day, but I was in a mask and I try to stay six feet away from everyone as much as possible, but it's still scary. I felt like I had to go, but I was still like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's terrifying. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's get into your background a little bit. You um, grew up in Orange County and you went to school at the University of Arizona to study mm -hmm. musical theater? Yes, to study musical theater. What, what did you get from uh, college? And is that what led you to, obviously musical theater, is that what led you into acting? Or did, were you into that beforehand? Well, I, I definitely, I studied music and uh, okay. like vocal jazz performance and classical oh, wow. singing for years as a child. That was kind of like my extracurricular, my focus. Right. And then when I got to college, I realized I wanted to try uh, kind of incorporating that into doing some stage work. So I just mm -hmm. thought when I'm, you know, I grew up doing musicals and dancing and stuff like that, but I'd never really acted, you know, being from Southern California, yeah. I think people do assume that like, oh, you're like, you do commercials, but I never did any of that stuff. Wow. So it was definitely, college was definitely my first experience of like just acting, training, learning about, you know, things that didn't have necessarily to do with music or singing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then, of course, incorporating the two. 
I, um, I didn't graduate. <laughs> I went Seems like you did okay. <laughs> I went for three years and yeah, it was a specialized, it was a BFA. So, okay. you know, it was basically a conservatory kind of plopped on top of a university experience. So I had an opportunity to kind of get started out here and I figured out here, meaning Hollywood, LA, right. and I thought, right. you know, my parents are basically down there. It's, it makes sense for me to leave early. Mm -hmm. But funnily enough, I just got, I just got my transcripts because mm. I'm going to go back to school. Oh, okay. Just like online. I mean, I wish I would have thought of it this, the first day of quarantine, but sure, of course, sure. you know, we come yeah. to things when we come to them. And yeah, so who knows what the future holds and obviously I'm still working as an actor and I plan to do that for a long time, but um, I don't know, I'm ready to like see what else. Yeah, what are you gonna study? I don't know. Oh, I okay. I need to get my, you know, I need to get like an undergraduate bachelor's degree, which I just, I fled school. Okay. I was like, I'm out of here. So I still have like credits I need to take to actually get a degree and okay. then just like go from there. But you gotta start with one, you know? You do, you do. Uh, is that something that's kind of been in the back of your mind like through your career or did it just kind of crop up now like during quarantine? It, uh, it, it comes up every once in a while. I think that like, mm -hmm. I've been so lucky as an actor that I've been able to play a lot of different characters. Yeah. I think, you know, there's obviously more opportunities for me as like like a, a white woman, you know, like I can play all kinds of characters and I'm a real research psycho. Mm. So yeah. I loved kind of getting to, you know, I, I played a, uh, and I just did a, a couple years ago, a Duplass Brothers movie and I played, um, uh, I played a doctor, I played mm -hmm. um, an oncologist and I was in one scene and I had so much fun talking to like a friend of a friend who's an oncologist and what is their experience when they have to tell somebody good news, bad news, like what is this for you? And yeah. going down the rabbit hole of like, just the actual research around it, that whenever I have an experience like that, I always think of like, wow, it would be really fun to like do this for reals. <laughs> and <laughs> actually, you know, like instead of just base level learn about something, to just really right. dive in. Wow. Um, and also, I, I, I did this this show, this comedy on HBO called Hello Ladies, and there's a big- I love comedy. Hello Ladies. Yeah. It's, oh, I miss that Stephen show. Merchant, oh. He's everything. Such He's a great. smart, kind, funny, good person. I'm, uh, I'm so glad to hear that because I'm oh, a huge fan amazing. of extras yeah. and everything. Yeah. He's so wonderful and really like shared that show with me. Mm. Like, it was like, we're doing this together, which right. is like not, that's not all the time, you know? Yeah. Um, but there was a, an arc in that, up until like we, we did the we did the kind of um, Christmas special at the end is what they call it in, in the UK, which is like a, an hour long special, kind of the grand mm -hmm. finale. And him and I had talked about, I think me wanting to like go back to college. And so I, that, I don't know if that's why he incorporated it, but there's this mm. whole thing where my character goes to school and like expands herself and like um, kind of actually <laughs> acts out that narrative that Christine has, that I have. Yeah. And, yeah, it's just, it definitely stuck with me. And he actually told me, I ran into him, he was like, a woman, I guess, stopped him somewhere and was like, I watched the finale of Hello Ladies and I've always wanted to go back to school and it really inspired me to do it. Oh. So I went back to school and got her degree. Oh my gosh. Isn't that adorable? That is adorable. You're an inspiration. I'm... You're making more people educated? I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. Um, so you got your, is it true you got your first role on CSI Miami? That is true. Wow. Okay. Uh, what was getting that role like? And then that seemed to just kind of snowball your career. Like, yeah, I, I wasn't in the union and that role made it so I could actually become a member of SAG. Mm. That was a big That's deal. That's awesome. Yeah. And it was like a, like a guest star, but, um, I had to lick who's, uh, who's an actress who was actually in 
the Hello Ladies pilot. Oh. Um, I had to, oh gosh, I'm totally blanking on her name. She's so wonderful, Sarah. And I had to lick her face. Sure. <laughs> in the show. And it was so weird, my first job. And it was what? like a nightclub scene and I had to lick her face. And it was like, I was like, well, I guess I, this is, a, I'm an actor and I just lick faces. Yeah. Like, this is this... so weird. And I didn't know where to look. <laughs> I didn't know where the camera, I was like, what are all these- What do I do with my hands? <laughs> I no, yes, exactly. I had no idea. Like, wow. when can I go to the bathroom? Like, I was so clueless. And I finally, I remember on set being like, first time, I've never done this in my life. And everybody was like, oh, okay. We'll tell you every single thing that you do. And like, and I just oh, I felt so relieved that I, it was like, wow. out of the bag. I think I did that probably like on the last day. <laughs> I was going to say, that's good. That's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll get into Walking Dead now. That was in, I think, 2014, right? Season five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so how did you book the role of Dawn? Mm -hmm. Well, I, um, I auditioned um, uh, Bialy Thomas Casting. They're like amazing. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And I, uh, at the time, because it was, still very popular show everything was secret mm -hmm. so of course i'm sure you've heard this story before there were fake sides oh, fake yeah. character fake storyline and it she was a judge oh and i was like oh this is interesting so she was mm -hmm. kind of like delegating and basically justifying the you know sacrificing for the greater good and all the kind sure. of con like you know ideas that don you know played with in the episodes but right. it was different mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so you kind of different. know like okay I'm, I'm signing up for the show and i'm really excited about this but like i don't know what it is it, did you um so you didn't know it was the walking dead or you weren't as familiar with the walking dead um, i knew it was the walking dead i was not familiar with the show oh okay interesting that's really cool though yeah i, I did not know I, I mean i i think i had some friends that had been on it Mm -hmm. and said they had an amazing experience so it was all from like oh fun job you know but I didn't yeah. really realize like the universe I was stepping into <laughs> and how much this show meant to so many people yeah. um but so I think not knowing that made it so I was like okay I didn't like you know crap my pants <laughs> the audition. yep always Did a good you, thing to not do that yeah, um yeah. not how you get jobs <laughs> no not yeah no, absolutely not. So, so you got the role and then they, did they say, okay, just kidding. She's actually a cop in this hospital. Like, how did that like play out? Was, I think yeah, Gimp, I was Gimple in charge then? Oh, I love Gimple. He's yeah. the best. I worked He's with him great. on Flash Forward. Oh. From back in 2009, which is my first show that got picked up. Like oh. my first pilot that got an order and he okay. wrote on that show and he's so wonderful and brilliant. Um, so yeah, he was there at that point. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Like, I don't re like I was thinking about it this morning. I don't really remember when I was like, oh, I'm a cop. I think it was like when I got the first script a couple of days before flying to Georgia. Yeah. And so I was like, oh gosh, okay, research mode. So I went, you know, of course, into my research mode as best as I could if my memory serves, I think this is how it went. But um, yeah, it was kind of like, you know, cause the way that they write, the way that Scott kind of approached the show is that every little thing meant something much bigger, mm. you know, as part of kind of the, what, you know, they're trying to say with the story. So you can, yeah. you can get into that stuff before you get into the kind of like lens of the, the job your character does or. Right. So, you know, I was able to kind of live with, and I, of course, after I got the job, I watched a lot of the show and mm. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is so intense. <laughs> There's people blowing people up with tanks. You're just like. Yeah. 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 And I think but you didn't... that I wasn't really able to talk about it either. Oh yeah. That's, that's yeah, pretty so... common. And I, I, don't think you had to lick anyone's face either. So oh, 
Mm-mm. That's I good. I had to shoot someone's face, but I did not. You did have to shoot someone's face, right under the face too. It's brutal. Um, it was actually one of my favorite storylines in the whole series. I'm not just saying that because you're here, because it was like it was all survival mode and like in the woods and everyone's growing beards and gritty, yeah. and then cut to this like hospital, which is kind of running with these like Mm -hmm. sort of crooked cops like in charge and like their own sense of justice. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, it's so different from, you know, after five seasons, you kind of have to change it up. So that was like a really fun storyline. Did you know that it was gonna be, your character only had a few episodes? Like, yeah, they gave you- Yeah, I I knew that I was, I I think they, and from the beginning, it was like three or four. Right. Was like the, the idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, I think I did three, maybe I did four. I don't really remember. Yeah, I think, yeah. But um, I, I should know that, but we'll just, yeah, we'll fine. edit it in and we'll, we'll both sound smart. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Make me sound smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was like, but it was, uh, it was really spread out mm-hmm. because they, you know, they have, they had, at that point, they had such a large cast and, so much of the shooting was exterior, interior. So like a lot of the environments are not controlled, but our environment was very controlled. We were just in one building the whole time, which was Mm -hmm. interesting. It it was so hot inside the building because it was like an abandoned building. It was like an old Mm -hmm. hospital that's not, you know, used. So I just remember being like, oh gosh, it's so hot in there in my like polyester cop outfit. Yes. And then going into the hair and makeup trailer and seeing people with just just covered in like shit, <laughs> other <laughs> characters like the zombies and the this and the that, like just dirt and the and then like actually filming in the woods. Yeah. And I remember thinking, well, okay, I'm, this is cool. I I lucked out. This is actually okay. I yeah. I could just be inside my place with that has like a ceiling. Yeah. So. Um. I don't know if you know this, the latest episode, we're obviously, it's weird because the season finale is postponed right now because of the hiatus. They didn't have time to finish the effects. And they're right now, everyone's like trapped in a big like tower surrounded by zombies. And it's the same building they used for the Beth Hospital because you see they did like a shot from outside. And everyone's like, wait a minute, that's that's Grady Memorial, um, which is really strange. So, Oh my gosh. I know, it kind of blew people's minds. Um, that's crazy. So being on set, obviously that last day, was that the last scene you shot, the one with Beth? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. I don't really remember. That's fine. I don't really remember. Shoot. That's okay. It was, uh, but still like being on set that day, like, was it any like different? I mean, you were only there for a few episodes, but... Emily Kinney, like, this is her character after, like, three seasons coming to a close. Like, she was, like, emotional on Talking Dead afterwards about it. Like, how did, um, how was that being around that environment? Was it strange? I remember all of that. I, that's the specific thing that I remember. I remember how, and I don't know if, how candid people have get on this podcast, but yeah. <laughs> I think because the show was so secretive and because it was Mm. so kind of shrouded in this you know keep make sure you keep storylines close to the close to the vest it's like um i don't think emily knew until really close to the end right and i think that they there's you know part i understand that in some regard and then in another regard as like an actor i'm just like that's the worst thing that could ever happen like you're on a show for years and you move your house and your life is changed, you know, you, you, you do a lot of things to kind of throw yourself into this project and then to have it be over is kind of like a small micro of like <laughs> this idea for the greater good, you yeah. know? And I just remember that day, her getting that information and just being so just like rocked by it okay. and me sitting there just like, holy crap i'm so sorry like i didn't know what to say or what to do and she's of course so amazing and so professional and so wonderful Mm -hmm. but you really feel like you've come in and like destroyed this person's life and (laughs) all the cast comes when they say goodbye to a, a cast member and everybody's just really present and 
people you're doing the scenes with, or I, I remember the, the director, um, we had like a big rehearsal for that particular scene, like a couple days before on everybody's lunch break. And it's handled with a lot of care, mm. this um, saying goodbye and, and this kind of like uh, just ending of, of, of people's arcs on the show. Right. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a surreal place to be a guest actor. I'm a guest actor on a lot of things, but this definitely felt like I was stepping into like a, just a totally alternate universe reality. Yeah. And everybody was so kind and lovely to me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was a trip. Right. It, man, yeah, that must be hard. I didn't think about it like that. You just come in, kill this like series regular and you're like, bye. Yeah, this um, is working with you guys. <laughs> like, and everyone's like, oh. Yeah, it's a lot. You're just like yeah. creeping out the door. Um, so your character, obviously, everyone knows is, you know, obviously you killed Beth. That's probably what you're most famous for. But, you know, you kind of had a sort of morally ambiguous um, base, you know. Uh, sometimes you wanted to be on Dawn's side. Then sometimes she would do something where you'd be like, ah, I don't know. Is she selfish? And then she would, like, bring you back around. And then, you know, she kills Beth. So how, how do you land, you know, after all these years on your character? Do you think she was, like, evil? Do you think it was just something where she got kind of lost, like. Yeah. I mean, I think that like, it's, um, God, it's so weird that we're doing this episode right now. I when know. Pandemic, so it was like zombie apocalypse. And then when we're like, actually having the awakening around police brutality and like the murdering of people in the street, like it's just, so crazy to me the, the weird kind of parallel but um and i like, promise I that wasn't planned like we <laughs> had this on the docket we're like okay we're in this indefinite hiatus what are we going to do for this podcast yeah. so let's just do two iconic episodes from yeah. each season yeah and we would slated this not knowing it's kind of yeah. crazy it's crazy but i also think it's kind of awesome like what a, what mm. a cool random opportunity that we have but i you know i think that dawn is someone who you know, was obviously in a crazy situation because there's zombies. Like, that's yeah. great. Um, and also, she was clearly someone who ha invested a lot into the idea of what it meant to be a police officer. I think there was a lot of her identity, her pride, her origin story, like everything had to do with, you know, being part of this thing. And I think what we are starting to kind of understand and unpack is that, you know, a lot, a lot of the system of policing in America has been around about brutality mm. and about kind of oppressing and, and keeping people from, you know, not feeling afraid as kind right. of like a tool. And I think that she absolutely did that right? Like she used her tool, which is a tool of brutality, in order to stave off the fear she had. Mm. And I think that her fear, which I think is true in, you know, systems of white supremacy or whatever, is, is that, you know, there's always this fear of the oppressor that there's going to be an uprising, a revolt. They're going to lose power, right? And I remember going through the scripts and doing the breakdowns and seeing so many moments when Dawn reacted out of that fear of losing power that was so brutal. And like all the stuff that happened with Tyler who played Noah, like she yeah. was like so obsessed with him and was weirdly like was not gonna let him go. And it, it, it's just so much about fear and and I guess trying to protect herself i right. don't know but really really like yeah very very confused very frightened and i think very just a lot of justifying yeah it seems like with hate and like brutality a lot of it stems right from fear and yeah. people you know who are who are cops or maybe other positions probably get caught up in the power sometimes yeah. and you know it changes people yeah. um you know 
like you said, as we mentioned, like with everything that's going on in the world, it's, it's made me like, you know, I know we're like two white people talking about this, but yes. it's made me rethink like the role of police in society where people are yeah. talking about defunding it in Minneapolis. They're just going to disband the entire police department and they're doing like a whole new thing. Yeah. Um, ha have your opinions on police changed at all? Like during all of this? I think yes. Fair to say yes. Mm -hmm. I think I've just looked at it differently. Um, again, I've played cops a lot and I've never thought about uh, like my, my whiteness when I yeah. really, you know, based on the storylines that I play. I mean, it's all kind of like white fit, you know, like white television with white faces, like telling the yeah. story of that's, it's just very, uh, you know, it's very like zero sum game, good mm -hmm. guy, bad guy stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I always kind of had this like blind, you know, privilege of not having to think about that, not having to think about how that affects the story. I don't have to think about, well, I'm a white person in this world. What does that mean? Because right. the world is white, you know, yes. I never have to yeah. have those thoughts. Right. Um, but I definitely just doing a lot of the research, reading a lot of things, talking to a lot of people, listening to a lot of things, and just not me, not having any awareness of what police budgets were, not having any awareness of like who decides what those budgets are. Not, like I, I just had so much that I didn't know around that stuff that I'm slowly trying to figure out. Yeah, it um, seems culture is changing their opinion on uh, police as well. I mean, Cops just got canceled. That show Live PD yeah. just got canceled. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine apparently they're gonna like devote a lot of their next season to talking about racism. Like it seems yeah. like cops have always kind of been, you know, the good guys in most right. you know media, and now that's changing. It, it's weird. It's it's twenty twenty has been such a strange year, but I think in I guess silver lining, it's going to force us to grow in like real ways. Um, yeah. Yeah. And help. I, mean, I feel energized, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I know. And like I said, yeah, it's hard to be at home like when protests are happening and things like mm -hmm. that. And, you know, you just want to do the best you can as an ally and you want to right. be able to donate to the right causes and be yeah. vocal on social media about it. Mm -hmm. And also like, it's hard to know because it's hard. Yeah. And you don't know if you're doing enough. Right. So. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think it is also good to always remember that like, as much as I really do believe that this is like sweet, an internal thing that people just need to look internally and mm -hmm. really acknowledge some things that are uncomfortable. I do think that that in and of itself is like a luxury. Of, right. of whiteness like that's what that it is a privilege to not have the fear that if I don't act this second another black person might get murdered by a cop right you know so I get to think like wow I really need to challenge myself for the next six <laughs> weeks and really decide that when I vote I'm going to do it right like it is it's a different feeling for for people like me that look like me and I think it's just I mean, I, it's just, I think it's just good to name that and acknowledge that. I um, agree. It'll be interesting to see how, uh, you know, cops um, and just situations involving them are changed when the industry does come back and they start recording. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of quarantine content for sure. Yes. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I just spoke I with mean, I Andrew. I haven't heard specifically about anything, but I, you know, I've, I've read some scripts for things that I was in the middle of shooting Grace and Frankie. For yeah, Netflix. love that show. Oh, I love. Thank you. It's so fun to do. It's like you, you just sit there and you, it's a, just a masterclass. You're watching yeah. brilliant people yeah. just be effortlessly brilliant. <laughs> and you got to work with another Walking Dead alum, Ethan Embry. Oh, yeah. I, he I was in season five and six. Yeah, he's amazing. He's so wonderful. And so another, again, like as a guest actor coming into that environment, being like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And he was just like, it's, come on. Like he's yeah. just so 
welcoming and lovely. Yeah, I just started binging it. I'm like, just almost through season one. But for this podcast, I went and like, skip to season six to like watch some of your episode and try not to like see any spoilers. I'm like, oh shit, why are they together? Okay, uh, all right, cool. You know, like, try yeah, there's that. a lot that happens. I was like, oh no. To, to six. Um, I, did, but, I did my best. Hey, you know what? I, I remember when I first got this job, Walking Dead, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I gotta watch it all. And then after like season three, I was like, I like it's so bleak and it's so yeah. intense. It's not really a binge show. Mm. It's just too much. It was too much for me. I was like, I gotta take breaks. I can't watch. So I didn't get to the, I watched, I think the, the gist of like six or seven prior to me, you know, like the season right. before me, I skipped the, a body. Cause I just couldn't put myself through all of that. Like terror. But because yeah. I don't watch, I, that's just like not my genre. But. <laughs> if I if I have to binge something that bleak, I have to like break it up with like some TLC, like some ninety day fiance or something, so I can like actually you know turn off my brain a little bit and just <laughs> enjoy the trash. <laughs> Absolutely, you gotta have it. You gotta have it. I think you've been in a few. You were in a, a Better Off Zed, right? Yes. Yes, yeah, you're, another zombie. Your char spoiler alert, your characters do not fare well in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, that one was like very sad. That was a yeah. very sad ending. That was a really bleak ending. I watched that last night and I was like, oh my God. Yeah, that, that's such a great, I mean, that's something that we could have like shot. <laughs> during yeah. the oh yeah, it was just like the two of you pretty much with just, you know, the zombies yeah. outside. Yeah, we had a very small crew. There was like six or seven people the whole time. Oh wow. We in one house, a director's house. And sure. it was amazing. What is next for Christine Woods? You have, I know you've been doing some voiceover work. You have college coming up. Well, I actually was one of the, one of the many who had to cancel her wedding. Because no. of the, the, the pandemic. And, um, it was going to be in October. It was going to be on Halloween. And oh we, we decided pretty early, because we hadn't really planned anything yet. So we decided pretty early on to just, let's be smart about this. Let's not, let's, you know, we have, he's from Chicago. It's like people would be flying in and yeah. old people are not, you know, it's like, not right. so like, you know what, let's just cut our losses. I think the only thing we did was like book the hotel and we got to save the date and that's it. So, oh, well, that's we, nice. You know, it wasn't the, the story you're hearing of people who had to just like tell everybody the, the wedding's off next weekend, <laughs> like all this stuff. <laughs> so oh that's I'm been so happening. Sorry. It's actually okay. I mean, I think that we, had this realization where we just feel so happy to be healthy and we feel happy mm. to be together and yeah. that, you know, we, we want to be married. We don't yeah. necessarily want a wedding, you know, right. that would be yeah. amazing and fun, yeah. but you know, so yeah, that's definitely been that, that was an interesting like couple of weeks, like kind of navigating that. I guess with that, I mean, I don't really have, anything else uh i had a really great time talking to you honestly uh, yeah, thank you so, so much fun. for doing this this was my first like walking dead kind of like fan get into really? it thing i've ever done i've never gone to uh, a signing you do the cons no i've never done it i i feel like i was maybe gonna do one and i had to cancel at the last minute and i just never got around to it but my sister-in-law uh brenda is like a huge fan and mm. she is probably gonna listen to this. Hi, hi, Linda. Hi. And um, <laughs> she's always like, "You gotta go to a thing. You gotta do a thing." And now it's like they, that might never happen again. So it I could probably missed. won't. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe in a different crazy. form. I don't know. Yeah, it's, who knows? That's crazy. Yeah, but so well, thank you for this. Was really fun. I'm glad. Totally. I'm glad. Uh, welcome back to the family. You never left. You're always here. You know, once a Walking Dead fan or once a Walking Dead, you know, member. You're always, always yeah. a member. Right. Um, tell the people before we go where they can follow you on social media if you're so inclined. Um, I am not on Facebook. I think there's some pretend me's on Facebook. Oh, like you know, you've made it when you got the pretend me's. Yeah, they've tricked a couple of aunties. I'll tell you that much. Oh my god. Um, but I am on Instagram, and my Instagram handle is at Tricky Bear. So Tricky Bear. T R I C K Y B E A R. What is Tricky Bear? 
Tricky Bear was my nickname that someone gave me in college. Okay. My last name is Woods, so it's like... Bear Woods. Yeah. Okay. And it was so dumb and so stupid. I made it my email. And it just... It's still my... It's like still not that whole thing. I didn't just give everybody my email on the yeah. listening to this podcast. There's something else in it. But... Yeah, it, it was just, a series of numbers, your email. It stuck. At, at Hotmail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it stuck. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, everyone go follow Christine. You are so lovely. Thank you for doing this again. And um, we will uh, hopefully talk to you in the future sometime. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Be safe out there. Thanks. You too. And that was my interview with Christine Woods. Uh, I had a really fun time talking to her. You know, I didn't realize she was in Grace and Frankie. I am only in season one right now and I've heard you're all caught up. So, um, you have seen her, maybe not have realized it. Cause as she said in the interview, most people don't recognize her from walking dead fandom because her hair was up the whole time and now it's usually down. So, uh, yeah, I finished Grace and Frankie and was very surprised that I did not recognize Christine but yeah from what she said you're like it's it's crazy with her hair down and with her up she is just one of those people that looks so different she was in she was in so much stuff too like hello ladies she's in she plays Entrapta she voices Entrapta which is one of my favorite princesses and she um, the princesses of all right so before we wrap up you we are going to go that. into stray okay. arrows these are some observations we had that didn't fit into other segments but we're gonna force you to listen to them now um I will start us off uh, just so if anyone was like just binging The Walking Dead, as a lot of people do that yep. now that it's on Netflix and other streaming platforms, um, when Beth died, I mean, it was such a massive thing. First of all, um, and we all make mistakes. I, I know I'm a social media manager, but first of all, back then, AMC accidentally spoiled Beth's death by posting <gasps> a picture of Daryl carrying her body in his arms uh, before the West Coast had the chance to see the episode. When everyone eventually saw it, there were a lot of petitions. The biggest one gained over like 60,000 signatures to bring Beth back. And um, I mean, w- once you get shot in the dome, it- it's hard to do. It would have been nice to see her in any of the delusional sort of hallucinations we've seen. Um, that hasn't happened yet. What are your stray arrows, Alexandra? It's the quote on top of the church, the quote on top of the dome of the, the church, mm-hmm. uh, Gabriel's church. We get a shot, a clear shot of as the walk, as, um, Michonne lets him in and the walkers break in and they're trying to change him and then they, they're trying to fight them. Then eventually they just decide to run for the rectory. There's a shot of the walkers overrunning the church and the quote above the quote above the uh, uh, the quote above the altar uh, reads, I believe he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life when quite literally oh. the people who are abiding by those rules are living eternally. Here is eternal life. It's just kind of it made wow. this episode. And I don't I don't know if this was the point at all, but it made this episode seem like a send up of both or- organized law and organized religion. Fan- fantastic <laughs> spot, Alexander. I'm proud. Good job. I also thank you. I also really, really liked uh Rick in a cop car again and how comfortable he looked in that whole sequence where he oh, is, so runs good. over a person but just Rick immediately flying back into that car and grabbing the radio stop stop slow down stop running it's just the guy hits the ground hard I was like I think you broke my back and Rick's like yeah well you should have slowed down I don't know what to tell you yeah that's a broken back right there all right that wraps up this week's episode of talk dead to me thank you guys so much for listening And, uh, you know, it's hard times right now and it's been crazy and um, this helps keep us a little sane. So we appreciate uh, your support. And next week we are going to be diving into season six, uh, one of the most intense episodes of the series called JSS. Millennials. Millennials join the apocalypse. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. But this is also when the wolves invade Alexandria and Carol goes from zero to Assassin's Creed uh, very quickly. So I cannot wait to cover that. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. And as always, happy birthday, Nate. Happy birthday, Nate. We miss you. You know, I hope Woody is listening to these and taking notes and just thinking about, you know, everything going on. But he's probably not because if I had a baby, I feel like I would just tune out everything in my life. I think you'd have to or else the baby's get upset with you.